We have had some great conversations that have provoked our thoughts about the supernatural music of the Bible. And it comes from an online course called The Music of God, available at lamarboshman.com. Now this episode, we're gonna discuss the intent of music in God's kingdom. Why, what's it about, and what is its purpose? Hey everybody, this is Lamar Boschman, and I'm really excited about this podcast. We're exploring the music of God, the music in God's economy, the music in God's kingdom. What's it like? Do we have a theology of music? What's God's view on music? And our topic today is the purpose, the intent. Why did God create music, and what's his uh, intentions concerning music so that we can see its purpose, and, st- and then we're going to unveil that in the ongoing podcast. But first, I want to welcome Batsar Aichata from Oshawa, Ontario. Hey, friend. How you doing? Good, good, good. Good to see your smiling face. Yes, this has been a wild conversation, hasn't it? Certainly has, certainly has. Man, I get inspired. I'm I'm pumped. I want to grab a guitar and go out and bust some ghosts, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) I want to do signs and wonders. (laughs) <laughs> because Amen. the revelation that comes out of this uh, discussions that we're having is powerful. Well, it all comes from that online course called The Music of God, where I lay down the principles of what music in the Bible is and all about. And it's at lamarboshman.com. Just look for the upper left corner, uh, courses that transform. There's one on worship and there's one on music in God's kingdom. That's right. We talked about this earlier in previous sessions, how music was with God, and then God, the Holy Spirit, God the Son, say, well, let us make celestial singers who can sing, and let there be music outside of us, perhaps. And God created uh, angels to sing, and we gave the scriptures. They're in the course. We know this happened because when God created the heavens and the earth, angels sang because God told Job that's what happened. So there was music before the earth. Now, if music was with God in eternity and before man, and it was with God and in God, what does all that tell us? I know we visited about this before, but let's revisit again. What does that tell us about his intentions or his purpose? If God is perfect, there's no waste. Like he just does things for his pleasure, He's extravagant, yes. He will pick a strategy or a tool or a device or a, a way of communicating that is optimal. He's not he's not there going, he hey, is. listen, I created music, but really there's a better way. Yeah. <laughs> like no, he no, wouldn't like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I, because I am who I am, when I decide something or pick something or create something, of all the options I have, I chose the best. The best for myself, the best for you, the thing that I created. So, so, when, you do, so when, when we start to see that music is part of his economy and important to him and present with him when he's doing this, that says that, to take your point, that this is important. And this is important, and there isn't, for its function and its purpose and intent, there is no better way. Ah, very good. If there was, I would have used that. Right. <laughs> so that validates music in some way. Yeah. as well as anything else that is in his economy, that he says, this is important. And that's why I'm excited about looking at the scriptures that prove what you just said. The scriptures that indicate this is God's way, and this is probably the best way. There are other ways maybe, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. This is my first choice. That's what excites me about this subject. God yeah. loves it, and it's his first choice. Yeah. So we see a prototype in heaven of what music's like when angels sang and God created the music angel. We went through all this previous podcasts about the realities of music and God's economy in heaven as the King of heaven and the Lord of heaven. And now we bring it down to earth. What's God's purpose for music making for us? There is a theology. If God's talked about music over a thousand times in the Bible, hell is only mentioned 23. And yet, hell is reality. Well, can we say that music is a reality as well because it's emphasized so many times? You know, it's in all, it's in all major sections of the Bible. In fact, the largest book of the Bible is a collection of songs of praise and songs of prayer by multiple authors, the book of Psalms, for example. 
And we find it from the Apocalypse to the Pentateuch, songs. And we're going to get into this. It's, it's, it's so exciting. But God called us to make music. God made us to make music. And he called us. There's so many scriptures. Like there's one scripture I just read earlier where it says, sing to the Lord all the earth. Well, is that just a nice thought or is that a command? Is that, well, that's possible, has potential. Or is that God's word? Is that his intention? I want all the earth to sing to me. Well, that makes music important. Yeah. I think, and then when he commands that, he's not commanding it as, uh, oh, do this just because I want it. It's like, do it. It's also for the earth, your highest, most satisfaction will happen wow. when you obey my commandment. So as you sing, you will find a pleasure and a satisfaction that comes when you do what you were created to do. I command it because I love it, but I command it also because I know what it does for you. Yes. And, and that reminds me of a scripture where it says that praise, and that's a musical term, is becoming the upright. Mm. In other words, singing praises looks good on you. Yeah. Look good and, on you. There you go. Uh, Ladies, <laughs> it's better than makeup, better than Avon or Revlon. Put some praise on. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> so <laughs> God made us to be attractive and pleasant and happiest when you were doing what you just said, singing praises to God. In fact, you know, it reminded me of something else while I was saying that. My vocal coaches, uh, different ones, that your best position for singing is the praise position. Mm -hmm. Put your hands in the air, stand upright, feet uh, slightly yeah. apart. Okay, chest, okay, like that. Okay, hold your chest there. Now bring your arms down. And that's different than us walking through life, you know, trying to make singing it does not come well there. Singing is best in the praise position you see there could be some intention here by the creator exactly no that's amazing <laughs> yeah and i love these little confirmations because it confirms what you just said over and over I, I like connecting all these dots all these scriptures in the bible and these philosophies paradigms and experiences and you start to see a trend you start to see an intent you start to see purpose in them and it's not just we're fishing for something to make something become a reality. It is a reality. We're just not cognizant of it, not aware of it. But now we're coming into a reformation of music making we have not seen on the face of the earth. Exactly. That's right. I remember when this movement of worship came to Canada. We had Canada Arise and then later on the Vineyard Movement. And there was this outpouring of worship. Uh, the Pentecostal Church of Canada did not like it at first. And now they're embracing it. And it came to the U.S. In my lifetime, I've seen us go from piano and organ to full band, full lights, full smog, fog machine. And my dad never experienced that. He could only sing German in Canada, only German in this, his, his circle. We were Mennonites. He could not sing harmony, too sensual, too sensual, oh, wow. too pleasant sounding to the senses. So just we sing German and we sing just the melody how far we've come. Well, likewise, like even the young worship leaders now, they don't realize the history that this worship they're enjoying now. Some people had to pay a price for this and pioneer this with a paradigm of yeah. worship theology, and then it became a reality. Well, I'm feeling the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now because I sense, just like I told you when I was in Dubai, God spoke to me when I asked him the question, what role do Christian musicians have in the last days? If signs and wonders and miracles happen in the Bible and musicians played, what role do we have when armies march in the last days? What role do we have when plagues come against us and pestilences are at our door? What role do Christian musicians play in this? And we have not yet stepped into the purpose and power of music making according to God's economy and God's kingdom and God's intent as we will see, because it's just now becoming revelation, just like it did with worship. And now we have the fruit of that. Focus on the root, focus on the theology, focus on the principle, and you'll see the manifestation. Sorry, I got excited okay. there. preached a little bit. So good, so good. I think there was a generation that struggled with harmony. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're at this stage where it's like, there's going to be a generation that's like, that looks back and says, yeah, there was a day where Christian music was all about 
lights and smokes, machines, right? And playlists. And now we're in this place of, man, when we sing, demons flee. When we sing, sickness leaves. Yeah. When we yeah. sing, God comes and shows himself, manifests in the room and in such a way that's even unbelievers say, surely God is amongst them. Yeah. We want to serve our generation and move forward, but we're taking the baton from generations past and we honor them and we move forward to the next and we don't want to drop the baton on our shift it's our our leg of the race and we want to be faithful in that and go as far and as fast as we can in the in the time and the season we but, have. but we can't unless somebody proclaims yeah somebody points the way yeah. somebody reveals it in scripture and we go wow yeah like for example the principle psalm 22 3 you are holy O you who inhabit the praises, that's a musical term. It means singing praises. You are holy, O you who inhabit the singing praises of Israel. There's a Canadian pastor that preached that because it happened in North Battleford, Saskatchewan, where he, out of the uh, latter rain movement, that revelation came forth. He started preaching it, and he was opposed. He had death threats by Christians. It was so radical. And because he pioneered and paid the price, and preached that revelation teaching, and he experienced it, because he, he wasn't even a singer, but he'd go sing over the pews before people would come into service, and they'd come in, and they'd fall over under the anointing of the Holy Spirit without anything but he touching them or anything. They'd fall over in the foyer, because he discovered that God indeed dwells in the singing praises of his people. Well, you know, that was pioneering, and you know what now? It's in the Baptist hymnal. I put it there. I was on the committee for word music, and we put it in the Baptist hymnal, and now preachers, Baptists, Presbyterians, Episcopals are all declaring that God inhabits the praises of his people, and it's a biblical truth that's grounded in God's in, in the church now, but it wasn't in 1950. It was not. It was revelation. Likewise, we declare that now, that truth but we're not experiencing all the fruit of the meaning of what that is because we don't have a theology of what singing praises really is. We have the concept, but we don't have the total experience. So that's why we are having this podcast. And that's why we're declaring okay. that there's a higher level of music making in God's economy and God's kingdom. And it'll have a profound impact in the last days. And I believe it'll bring about revivals, renewals, signs and wonders and miracles that we have not seen. Exactly. Yeah, I think you stand on the ground that you're on and you try to look as far into the horizon as you can. Yeah. And from my perspective, like I see stadiums and, and homes and living rooms, stadiums and living rooms and everything in between uh, where music rises up and people encounter the Lord in very sort of tangible ways. Yes, there's signs and wonders and all this stuff. It's like, but where people walk away saying, I met God. There's a place in worship that just totally brought the reality of heaven into the realm of earth. And I think when we are doing that, that's almost as far as I can see. And then I wonder, okay, but is that everything? Because the, for the generation that does that, what do they see? Yeah. You know, what, what's the extent? What's the horizon for them? And we can't see that. And so there was generations before us that's like, Man, lifting your hands in the middle of a service, that would have been like, that's as far as they right. could see. In our that lifetime, was, we've seen that. Exactly. I remember growing up in a Methodist church and I went to a camp and I saw people lifting their hands in worship. And then I came back to my church and I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to be the only one doing <laughs> that. I would lift my hands maybe to my waist. If somebody turned or even like just glance their eyes over, I would quickly sort of pretend like I was just stretching or something <laughs> like that. Lift my hands to my shoulders and then quickly would sort of just rub my neck just in case somebody was watching. And now, of course, we have freedom. We're not even thinking about that. In all Those denominations, in all circles of God's In all denominations, body. right? Yeah. But we want to keep our eyes on the horizon of our generation. What is the furthest that we can see? Um, Lord, increase that, of course, but maybe that's our portion. It's like maybe there's a, there's a place where encounters are a regular expected result or experience when the body of Christ comes together yes. in worship. Yes, and we're going to see the fruit of that root where that pastor preached, God inhabits the praise of his people based on Psalm 22, 3. Uh, I don't know anywhere else in, in the world that that was taught back in the 50s. And you know what? you could trace those streams of worship and music making 
all the way through the United States and and into cer- certain movements that we have today, mm-hmm. they were touched. Like even Hillsong and and a different Bethel. I talked to Bill Johnson. He was in those some of those early meetings. We have similar roots of the theology of music, especially of worship and praise. And Mike Bickle, International House of Prayer, my church, Gateway Church, come from that same stream. Now think about the streams of the revelation of music making and God's intent in that and what future generations will experience when you get the root right, the fruit will come. I love when you said that, man. So good. So if music was created by God for God, and we could say for his pleasure, for all things were created for his pleasure, by him and for him, and in him were all things made. Then music was created for his pleasure. We know music went secular. So with uh, Lucifer, his fall, he took his instruments with him, and now there's another source of music making. So what's God's intention when he sees his people struggling through their experiences, their, the influence of the prince power of the air, they're under the curse, man is sin. Adam is banished from the presence of God, just like Lucifer was. And Adam thought that he could think like God. There was that that subtle thought there. I could have the knowledge of good and evil. So there's similarities between what happened with Lucifer and what happened with Adam. God banished and expelled man from the Garden of Eden. And so there was a banishment and put cherubs there to keep man from coming back into his manifest presence. And yet, in 1950, come into his manifest presence with singing, quoting Psalm 100, verse 2. Enter its gates with thanksgiving, as courts with praise is a musical term, singing of praises. So in our generation, my generation, I have seen this revelation worked out and walked out to where now it's a reality and part of our lives. Think about what can happen when we discover the rest of God's intent and purpose concerning music. In a roundabout way, Batsurai, I was showing you how we're expelled from God's presence and how we can come back into his presence. And that's a last day generation revelation. Yeah. Obviously, Jesus is the door. Jesus is is our access. Jesus is the way. So he opens the door. The door is unlocked. The, The prison doors are open. We need to walk into this. This is all this territory and all this promise that is yet undiscovered or unfulfilled yes. because we have sat back in the prisons of our darkness and our blindness. And he's asking us, he's calling us, come and discover all that music has for you. Come and discover all the things that the music of heaven, the music of God can do both here in your life and in the spirit realm, etc. But this is the invitation of God, I think. It's to come and explore the very throne room that he has made a way for us to come into. Right, right. That that makes it so profound for me because of all the ways he chose for us to come into his presence, music's part of that. Enter exactly. his <laughs> gates with thanksgiving and his courts with musical praise, singing of praise. And then God says he would inhabit the singing praises of his people. So over and over in scripture, we find this connection between God himself his manifest person, and his music makers, his people making music to him. And this solidifies it. There's definitely an intent and a purpose God has for music making in his kingdom. Well, we've come to an end of our time, and we could talk about this a long time, but I'm excited about the next session where we're going to talk about some of the manifestations and the fruits of powerful music making in God's economy that causes us to be healed be set free. And it's interesting because the scripture has a lot to say about it. So thank you, Batsarai. And I want to challenge those of you that are listening to this podcast or watching it to check out the online course. Go deep, study to be approved by God that you're a student of his word, and especially if you're a musician or singer, but learn as a Christian or the father or pastor, learn what it is to use music to connect you and your family and your tribe and your congregation with the manifest presence of God. There's deep last day revelations concerning this and how you can have a victorious life. So check it out. It's available at lamarboshman.com in the upper left corner, transformational online courses. Well, I look forward to our next session and tell your friends, follow us on social media, check out the other YouTube videos to get more of these concepts and truths concerning music 
in the kingdom of God. We'll see you next session.